Section 3.1, linear equations and rectangular coordinates. Okay. A line graph is used to show changes, trends, and data over time. To form a line graph, we connect a series of points representing data with line segments. All right. So this is an example of a line graph that you might see um, in a news article. So the line graph in a figure shows average prices of a gallon of regular unleaded gasoline in the United States for the years 2005 through 2012. Estimate, pay particular attention to that word estimate, right here, estimate, the average price of a gallon of gasoline in 2008. So we're gonna go here to 2008, we're gonna go up, and that's this point right here, and we're gonna go across, and then we're just gonna basically guess. So we know it's between 320 and 340. It doesn't look like it's halfway, so it's not gonna be 330. So maybe 325? Uh, 328, 325, somewhere in that neighborhood. By the way, when it says estimate, you are not gonna get an exact answer, so just um, FYI. About how much did the average price of a gallon of gas decrease from 2008 to 2009? Okay, so we decided this was approximately 325, and in 2009, I'm gonna go with 235. And how much did it decrease? So I'm gonna subtract those two numbers. Grab my calculator. And so I have, um, let's see, 325 to 35 gives me approximately 90 cents. All right, in the last chapter, we did linear equations in one variable. In this chapter, we're going to be doing linear equation in two variables. Linear means our variables are to the first power, and two variables means I'm going to have an x and a y. When we have the x and y on the left-hand side, we call that standard form. So these are examples of equations in standard form. 3x plus 4y equals 9, or x minus y equals 0. Those are all examples of linear equations in two variables in standard form. All right. So if we have a linear equation in one variable and we get a solution, we find a number that makes this equation true. So in this particular example, if we replace x with 7, 7 minus 2 is equal to 5. We simplify the left, we get 5 is equal to 5. This is a true statement. When we have one variable, we're going to end up with one solution. However, when you have two variables, that does not mean that we are going to have two solutions. It would be nice if it worked that way, but it doesn't. So let's suppose we have y is equal to 4x plus 5. So if we replace our x with 2 and our y with 13, x with 2 and our y with 13, we end up with a true statement, I think. Yes. So um, 13 plus, no, not plus, equals 4 times 2 is 8, plus 5, 8 plus 5 is 13, we get 13 is equal to 13. So this pair of numbers, 2 and 13, would give us a solution to this particular equation. However, um, there are actually infinitely many solutions um, to this um, equation right here. So when you have two variables, we have a lot more solutions. So that solution 2 and 13, we usually write it as um, what's called an ordered pair. Pair meaning we have two numbers. Ordered meaning the order in which we write the numbers is important. So 
we always, 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 always write the x value first, and the y value always comes second. Um, if you go further in math, um, if you might, if you take um, pre-calculus or maybe calculus, um, you would have what's called an ordered triple, where the first number is your x, your second number is the y, and the third number is the z. So we always go in alphabetical order, always. Um, the x value is always given first. All right. So, okay. <coughs> oh, should have grabbed a drink of water. Sorry, <clears throat> something stuck in my throat. Decide whether each ordered pair is a solution of the equation. So we're trying to figure out if this ordered pair is a solution to this equation. We do this by um, plugging these numbers in. We're gonna plug this in for X, and we're gonna plug this in for Y. We're gonna simplify each side. Um, once we have a single number on the left side and a single number on the right, we're gonna compare those two numbers. If those two numbers are equal, then we have a solution. If they are not equal, it's not a solution. So two, we're gonna replace our X. Also, as a reminder, anytime you substitute a number in, you are going to put it in parentheses because, um, because of the, the negative. So if you did not put your parentheses, it would look like two subtract five, you end up messing up. So always substitute in um, using parentheses. Order of operations says we multiply first. So I'm gonna multiply the five and the two and get 10 and multiply the two and the negative five and get negative 10. I still have two numbers on the left hand side. So I'm gonna to continue to simplify. So 10 minus 10 is zero. Now that I have a single number on the left and a single number on the right, then I check to see if they are equal to each other. Well, you know that zero is not equal to 20. So therefore, this is not going to be a solution. Same directions, same equation, different ordered pairs. So we're gonna take negative four, plug it in, 20, plug it in. So five, replace our x with negative four. Replace our y with our 20. And we're gonna simplify. So we're gonna multiply, multiply, and then we add. All right, this time we do get 20 is equal to 20, which is true. So this would be a solution to this particular equation. All right, um, I am going to uh, stop here. I don't want to make the video um, too terribly long, so I'm going to stop here and um, finish the lesson in a second video.